Hello, and welcome to my workshop today. I'm Tamara R., and I know that you have been seeing lots of wonderful workshops here at the Maid Summit. Uh, it is a great experience and a great event. I participated in it last year just, you know, as a conference uh, participant. And this year, it's a pleasure of, me, pleasure of mine to actually present to you some information that I'm very passionate about. Um, I'm extremely passionate about employee performance and how you measure that and how you can improve people's performance. So I want to get right to it because I've got a lot of information to go over with you and let's dive into this presentation. So today we're going to talk about employee performance and why those pesky employees won't do what you want them to do. Um, that seems to be a big issue with people and I know that I have worked on employee performance for a long time. I will tell you, I have made every mistake in the book. Uh, they don't give you, uh, you know, it's like you don't have a handbook of here's, this happens and you do this. But I'm gonna give you some tools to think through some things about when you're working with people. So let's dive right into the overview. First of all, we're gonna talk about how to determine the problem with your employee. So they're not doing what you want them to do. Let's talk about how you determine what exactly is going on. The next thing we're going to talk about is expectations, how you communicate your expectations and making sure that your employees know what they are, and then finally some solutions to some of these problems that are presenting themselves to you. So how to determine the problem. It's very important to set clear expectations, it's very important to assess employees, and it's very important to give them feedback. So when you're setting clear expectations, that means that you have a clear picture in your mind of what you want people to do and that it's been communicated well or at least clearly to the employee. I can't tell you the number of times I've sat down with an employee and said, why didn't you do so-and-so? And they're like, nobody told me I was supposed to do so-and-so. So you have to be very clear with your employees. You can't determine why they're not doing what you're asking them to do unless you can be absolutely certain that you know the what you want them to do. Um, so you gotta be very specific, you have gotta have observable uh, behaviors that you're looking for. For example, this does not have to be complicated, by the way. I, when I first started trying to, to do better with working with people, um, when I finally figured out what I, that I knew a little bit about cleaning, is I made a list of 11 steps to clean a bathroom. And I give them those 11 steps and I go through them and then we demonstrate them for them and then we watch them do it and we coach them through it and then we leave them alone and we check and we see how they're doing. Um, those 11 steps are, you know, go in, take the garbage can out, pull the trash out, reline the garbage can, set the trash aside, go back in, shake the rug onto the floor, bring the rug out and put it out uh, in, by the door, go back, wet spray all the areas we're going to wet clean let it be soaking, go back, you know, and so these are really clear, they're very specific steps that they need to go through to clean a bathroom. It's not complicated, I believe that you should be as simple as you can, uh, but it has to be clear and it has, you have to be able to observe it. They can't read your mind, so if you start talking to somebody and they say, I did not know we were supposed to do it, then what we need to make sure is that you're communicating clearly now, Yes, some people will say, I didn't know I was supposed to do that. And at that time, you say, well, now you do. So we're going to move forward, assuming that since you do know now, that it's going to happen in the future. Then you have to assess your employees to make sure they can do it, because you have people that um, may not be able to. So you have to observe them. It is like watching paint dry sometimes when you have to watch somebody clean a bathroom. I have done it hundreds of times. I've watched people clean bathrooms and I've watched them take hours cleaning bathrooms. I have watched them cleaning kitchens. I have watched them dusting. I've watched them doing floors. You know, you have to watch people and you have to observe and give them feedback so that they know what's going on. Consult with other people in key staff positions. Do you have a field service manager? Do you have a supervisor? Do you just have a really good employee that you can work, put working with them one day and see, do they know what they're doing? Um, you can interview the employee. Just sit down and say, tell me about when you're cleaning bathrooms, where do you start? What do you do next? How do you do this? How do you clean the floor? How do you clean a toilet? What, what order do you clean the toilet in? Um, you can do the testing, and we take our 11 steps to clean a bathroom. We ask employees to memorize them, and we ask them to come into the office and write them down in order from memory so that they, we know they know the steps. 
Um, simple technique, but it does make sure that they know. And then finally, you have your tell-all is client complaints. Um, if you get a client complaint repeatedly with somebody, then you know, well, that's a problem. But we want to get to not having complaints. So you want to do the observations and the um, interviews and stuff before you get to the complaints. Give feedback. I don't, you know, people just hate this. They hate it. They hate sitting down with an employee. And frankly, they hate it because most of the time when they sit down with an employee, they're giving bad feedback. Um, I remember one time I called an employee. I said, I need to talk to you. And I heard all the other employees say, ooh, go into the principal's office. Well, I didn't want to be that person. I mean, that means that the only time that they think that they're coming to talk to me is when there's a problem. So you have to have routine conversations with your employees so you're having a good conversation, positive conversation, so that when they come to you and you have an issue that you have to raise with them, they're not scared of you or they're not, they trust you. So for us, we do daily evaluations for the first 10 days with new employees. We have a little outline. We do things like, are they on time? Are they, wearing our, are they doing our dress code? It's just like several things that they can success, very easily succeed on. But then we tell them that by the end of the first five days, they have to have good quality when they're cleaning in the bathroom, and they have to clean it according to our procedures. If they can't make a four or five on that, this is probably not a good fit for them. The second five days is can they start meeting our time standards because that's money. So, and, and we tell them, you know, the way that we base our schedule and the way that our prices are done, that we have to have these houses cleaned in a certain length of time. In order to do that, then you have to be doing, be done with your bathrooms and helping with floors by certain, you know, by a certain length of time. So if they can't get a four or five on either one of these by the end of the first week or the second week, then we would terminate them. And they get that in their training when they first start, in their uh, pre-training before they start going out. They know this is coming because, again, you want to be clear. Longer-term employees, you want to meet with them monthly at a minimum, preferably weekly. And what I'm doing right now, because I'm not going into the office because of the certain situation that we're all dealing with in the COVID, um, I do Zoom calls or I do FaceTime with all of my supervisors once a week and it's on their schedules. They know what day we do it. They know what time we do it. Um, I had to threaten them that they couldn't leave the office and just go home if they, if they didn't hear from me, that they have to call me or give me a notice with a text when they're about to call me. So it's really important that you check in. Sometimes those meetings aren't very long. They're just like, how are you doing? What's going on? You know, I'm doing this and whatever, but it is a touch base. So let's talk about the reasons employees don't meet expectations because we we now we've been clear about the expectations. We can assess the person against our expectations, all right? And then we're giving regular feedback to them about how they're doing. So the reason employees don't meet expectations is the first one is they don't know how. Um, I would challenge you that if you don't have clearly outlined uh, steps for doing these tasks that we want people to do that they may be doing them, but they may not be doing them the way you want them. And that means that they don't know how to do it the way you want it done. However, if they're doing it and you don't have a preference for how it gets done, as long as it gets done, no problem. Just leave them alone and don't worry about that, but just make sure that you know, they know that they cannot have complaints because at a minimum, your expectation is that they will not have a complaint. Um, they haven't received good feedback. So you have people who go out, we've had people go out and they start cleaning bathrooms and, you know, they've got this tech. I used to do a lot of training on, on cleaning bathrooms. They go out, they're cleaning the bathrooms, but nobody ever says to them, no, you, you remember, you can't do this or, oh, you know, when you have that problem, you have to use this cleaner. I've had people clean a spot for an hour. And then you go to ask them, why were you cleaning that spot for so long? And they're like, well, the stuff I was using, I just had to scrub it, scrub it, scrub it. And you're like, well, you know, if you have a problem like that, you probably need to consult with somebody else who might be able to give you some different types of products to use. So if they're not receiving good feedback about how to work your system, that can be a problem as well. They can't do the job. And to be honest, there's just some people who can't do it. And or they make a choice not to do what you're expecting to do, which is the really frisky ones that we're going to talk about. So if they don't know how to do it, assuming that you have outlined the expectations and you're clear about it and you've pro pro provided good training and they can do it, then you're just on your sailing on your way and you have an excellent employee, right? But if they can't do it, what's the problem? Um, and there's a few that, again, we're going to talk about feedback. You would probably 
get tired of me talking about this, but it's so important that you have a relationship with your employees and that you're giving them feedback. They need feedback. Research shows that employees want to know how they're doing on the job. People who get feedback are happier in their jobs, you know, because they feel connected to something. So you really, really, really have to give feedback to people. And you got to uh, avoid what I call human drift. I get people out there who are, we have great, great supervisors. They've been with us for a long time. They originally were cleaners. We've kind of evolved over the years and now they're supervisors and they have, you know, one or two techs that work with them, generally one. And our supervisors sometimes, you know, we have very specific ways of doing these cleanings. And then sometimes I'll be talking to them and I'll say, well, if you had done it this way, there's no way you would have missed this. And they're like, oh, yeah, but you know what? I figured out there's a better way to do this. And I'm like, no, there's no better way to do this, sweetie. And they're like, oh, yeah, there is. And they start telling me how they have evolved the system for good, you know. And, and I have to go back with them and say, you know, if we've got something we want to change, then we all need to sit down. We all need to talk about it. And we all can make a decision about is that a good decision to make? And I'm okay with that. But you as an individual cannot say, oh, I think this is a better way to do it. So we're constantly having that because people, good intention people want to help you and do things better. So you have to constantly deal with that. Staff need attention. Staff need encouragement. Some of them more than others. So you have to be able to understand who you're working with. The employee can't do the job. They're not detailed enough. They can't remember the steps of the cleanings. They can't use the chemicals correctly. They're using chemicals on wood that never should be used on wood. They can't meet the time standards. These three things are, after the first week, they're not going to be a good fit, okay? So you've got to cut your losses in some ways, and I'm not saying that in a mean way to, uh, you know, anything about your employee, but it really, if they're not by the end of five days, recognizing mold, pink mold on their, the tub, and they can't tell if there's hair on the floor that you've pointed out to them all week, that's a problem, and they probably need to be terminated. Number four, your favorite is the employee makes a choice. They decide they're not going to do it that way. Um, there's a couple of things, and I've had some people who felt like the job was just too hard physically. Now, I make a big deal in now, now when I interview, I talk to people about this is a very physically demanding job. The first two weeks, you're going to feel sore. You're going to find that you have muscles you haven't used for a long time. You're going to have to soak in Epsom salts. I mean, we make a big deal, and our supervisors make a big deal with them about, I know you need to get some rest because this is a physically demanding job. So some people don't like that. My best answer to a question is I ask people, what's their favorite type of job. And when the person says, I got to move around, I can't sit at a desk, that's that's one of my best people. Um, I want somebody who cannot sit at a desk and who likes to be active. Secondly, they don't like the job. They don't want to be cleaning toilets. They don't want to be cleaning somebody's house. They just don't like it. They may be keeping it because it's a placeholder for them until they can find something better. Usually other people in your, uh, your other employees will be able to tell you that if something's going on. They have a problem with authority. Oh, that's my favorite, is that if you tell them to do something, they would like to do the exact opposite. This doesn't have anything to do with you. It has a lot to do with how they've been treated by authority and how they've dealt with authority and what's happened to them previously. Um, So you can do the best you can with somebody like that. But I've had people that I quickly would say, you know, because you probably would be better working in a a position that gave you more autonomy. Um, This is not going to be it for you. And and nicely let them go because they're, you know, if I want them to do everything in a certain way, if they don't, this is going to be a problem. They don't play well with others. If you put them on one team, they get, you know, unhappy and you move them to another team, which I frankly call passing the crap, but I don't say crap. Um... So, you know, if they don't play well with others, you just be aware. You might move them once, but moving them more than that, they're not going to get along with anybody. The last one is something that I do work with, and that is a person who's having trouble in their personal life that's affecting their performance in their work. You know, if I know that somebody's having a difficult time, like they're married and their husband is, you know, giving that, making things difficult for them in whatever way, I will work with them and I will talk to them. And if they need a day off, I will give it to them. But I also will tell them, You are doing fantastic here. Let this be your safe space. Let this be your place that you're successful. You know, let's try not to screw this up here because you're going to be much better off if you have a good place to go to work. And I will do whatever I can to support you. But understand at some point in time, you know, the business can only tolerate so much. 
So there's always that one, and you have to draw a line. You can't just let it be never ending. It can't be. So when you're supporting somebody like this, I always kind of make it like, uh, you know, let me, let's do what we can do. But remember, this is not something that can be ongoing for a long period of time. I mean, I start that right at the beginning. So solutions. Let's talk about solutions to some of these issues. First of all, let's identify who owns the problem, because there's four different issues, four different um, problems with people and why they're not doing the job. We're going to talk about building hiring, training, and feedback systems, and we're going to talk about termination. So who owns the problem? The company owns three out of four of these problems. Now, I know you'd like to say that it's all those terrible employees. I, you know, I, I'm, I feel you. I understand why you would say that. But honestly, you know, you hire the right people. You have the right things in place. It is not, it's not the employees. Um, you have to make sure that if the employee doesn't know how to do it, they, they're getting good training. You have clear expectations. If the employee does not receive good feedback for correction, they're not going to be able to do it. They're going to be doing it out there, floundering around on their own, trying to figure things out. The employee can't do the job. If they cannot do the job, and I have tried to hire people with special needs, I have tried to do different things because, you know, my background is social work. And there's just a point in time that you can't have people employed in this position uh, who can't do the job because it's too much of a risk to take if they're going to damage something in a client's house. The one who owns, the employee owns the problem about them making the choice. There's just no doubt. If they make a choice that they're not going to do what you ask them to do, that is a problem they own. So building hiring and training and feedback systems, you have to have those clear expectations. It can be simple lists. You have to develop training. It can be very simple where you talk to them about, you know, go through the list. They watch you do the list. You know, they do the list, you coach them through that, and then you leave them and come back and check on them to make sure they're doing the list in the correct order, and you're doing the QA at the end. So this doesn't have to be super complicated. You assess employees, can they do it? You know, you've seen them do it once, and, the, and they did a fantastic job, and the next time it's just it's terrible. Well, you yeah, know, they can do it. So if you know they can do it, they're making a choice not to do it. And that becomes the conversation. Um, I've had, I've got somebody right now and the supervisor say, you know, like you should do fantastic for two days. And then the third day it's like, what is going on? And so we, we are having conversations about her and that you have to provide regular and constructive feedback. So when those hard conversations come along, they're not that hard for you and they're not that hard for them. Um, and then you have to assess your hiring practices, to be honest, because if you're hiring people who cannot do the job, then you have to really start looking at what questions are you asking? You know, how can you determine that this person has a good, you know, is more detailed than not? Because people who are detailed tend to do better in these jobs. If you must terminate, you have to do it pretty quickly. If you have somebody who's not performing well and your other employees can get demoralized if you keep them on solid, they'd be like, you know, I'm doing all this work, you know, or I'm covering, I'm picking up for them. So you have to be really careful about that. You know, sometimes you have to keep somebody on for a bit, and I do that occasionally. I say, you know, Here's your choices. I can let them go now, or I can try to hire and let them go in about four days. What would you prefer? And I let this person who's doing the cleaning with them make that decision um, because it really is affect affecting them. So when we terminate, we do an oral counseling, and that might be one day. And then the next day, we would do a written warning and say, you know, we talked to you about this yesterday. Here's your written warning. When we do it in our state, I always put if performance does not improve, you'll be subject to disciplinary action up to and including termination, and I make them sign that. Because in Georgia, if the person has been advised that if their performance doesn't improve, they may, have, they may lose their job, and then we let them go, then they were advised and they didn't improve, and they don't have a problem with that. But you have to advise them that they could lose their job if they don't improve. Um, and then terminate with dignity, and this is really important to me. Your employees are watching how you treat everybody. They're watching how you treat people who you discipline. They're watching treat people, uh, how you treat people who are really good in the organization to see if you're favoring them over other people. They're watching everything you do. So when I terminate people, I'm as nice as I can be. I mean, I will terminate them and thank them for giving us their time and working with us to determine whether this was a good fit for them. It doesn't look like it's a good match. I know that there are many jobs that they will do well. 
Um, this particular job at our place is not going to be a good fit. Uh, they have they have a, they have very good qualities. They and I try to point those out. You're very reliable. You're pleasant. We have so enjoyed working with you. This position just doesn't fit you really well. Um, that doesn't have it. That doesn't mean you're a bad person. I do talk to them. But that doesn't mean you're a bad person. It just means this job doesn't fit you, suit you well. Um, so I do a lot of work with somebody I'm terminating. I get people who cry, and I will hug them, and you know, put my arm around them, and walk them out, and we'll talk to other employees, and I'll say, well, she's not going to be with us right now. She's going to go find something that's a better fit. But I mean, you have to do this with real dignity, and people appreciate it, and so do your other employees. So finally, I will tell you that <clears throat> management is a very deliberate, it's very deliberate work. Uh, you cannot be friends with the people you manage. You can be friendly with them, but you can't be friends. And you have to, in my opinion, believe that your success is determined by their success. So I'm always looking for ways to make sure that my people are successful. I don't want them to have bad days. So if I need to give them bad news about a feedback, then I probably won't do it on a Friday at all. I won't because I don't want to ruin their weekend. And my people would beat themselves to death if I did. Um, if I have to give them critical feedback, I won't do it in the morning because they got to go out and serve our clients all day. I'm not going to tell them that before they leave. So I'll let them go out and do all the cleanings. And then I might later in the day put something on saying meet with Tamara so that they know when they get back. And then they're always like, what's going on? What's wrong? And I say, no, it's not, we're just going to get together and talk, you know. Um, so I do everything I can to be thoughtful about what's, what is the impact of what we're doing on, going to be on, their, our, on our employees. And I would encourage you to do that as well, to be thoughtful and careful. You know, you don't have to pull the trigger really quickly to do something. You can think about it for a day and try to make a decision, sometimes two days. You just have to be thoughtful and careful about it with your employees and their feelings. So thank you very much for your time today. It has been a pleasure. I really appreciate it. And I hope to see you again soon at a workshop.